Hey friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me discussing the books that I read in ma, in April. Oh my god. Um, I read, I want, I want to say like six books last month. We read one, two, three, four, five, six. I read six books last month. Two of them were physical books. A lot of them were arcs actually. Let's start off with the two physical books that I read. One of them is the end of a series and one of them is a sequel that I've been meaning to get around to. So let's start off with the, with the ending. That book is The Last Sacrifice by Rochelle Means. This is a YA paranormal fantasy romance situation following the young um, Rose Hathaway who is born and bred to protect the royalty, the purebred vampires, the Maroi. She's a dampier which makes her part vampire. And this is the final book in the series. I do have a full kind of spoilery filled vlog and I'll leave that link down below for you guys to so go ahead and get to and, and watch and enjoy. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did considering how slow the beginning was in the first place and kind of the pace that was the other two books. But I really did enjoy how this ended and how it kind of wrapped up. It left a lot of things open for the spin-off series which I might read. I haven't decided quite yet. I, al I also just really enjoyed how the relationships and the friendships kind of wrapped up and became stronger. I do have questions about like the plot of the a plot that kind of got lost in the middle of it but I talk more about that in my vlog and you guys can have more of my in-depth thoughts in my vlog. The next physical book that I read in April was Homicide and Halo Halo by Mia Pima Nansala. I read the first book when it came out back in 2021 I want to say and I haven't had a chance to pick up the sequel or the subsequent um, third book in the series but this follows Lila who moves back to what's the sequel? This follows Lila after the events of the first book where she has kind of settled in back home with her family she's opened up a shop with her um, best friend and now she has been asked to help judge in a pageant and she was one of those um, former pageant queens growing up so there's a lot of drama more of that stuff I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars I think I rated it higher than the first book I really enjoyed this one there are trigger warnings though because it does talk about like, PTSD, fat phobia, fertility and pregnancy issues, predatory behavior, unresolved grief, parental death and dismissive attitudes toward mental health. I really did enjoy this one. The, the um, Mia P P Manansala in the foreword, foreword did say that it was going to be a little heavier than the first book, but I found the tones to be quite similar. It does discuss more heavier topics than the first one, but I didn't see much of a huge tone shift to where maybe you might be put off from the book. I really did enjoy this. I love seeing Leela kind of gain more development and flesh out a little bit more as a character. I love seeing more of her past and how that shapes her as a person today and I love just really seeing her kind of slowly fix the relationships that she has with her family. It's been kind of a little bit tense due to how they were brought up as kids. I really love this book. I cannot wait for the third book which I believe is already out called Black Mila and Babinka. Should be a good read and I'm very excited to see what happens next. The, moving on to the arcs I read, let's start off with the ones that are out as of April and that is Not Here to Stay Friends by Caitlin Hill. This is a YA um, contemporary romance following two best friends who have been separated on opposite sides of I think the map for a long time. Sloane goes to visit Liam in California and finds out that he is working as like a PA assistant I believe in, her, in his father's like TV show which is like The Bachelor but for children, like teenagers. And in an attempt to kind of help make the, the main characters, um, it's, not, it's not a bachelor. So she is helped, she is tasked with joining this show that is basically bachelor but toned down for teenagers because the main character like the guy he has a really bad rep in the show and they want to give him more of a good guy kind of rep so she is stuck on this this show where she has to participate in it and kind of like try to act like she's falling for him when in reality she and Liam have long time crushes on each other and it's kind of hard to get away from that. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's a really light and easy read I would say very low stakes. It was very obvious from the beginning who was going to end up with who. There wasn't a lot of like, it was angsty and a little dramatic but I really enjoyed it. It's just like a very young, it was just a very young and very lighthearted romance. I really enjoyed it. I did have my qualms with it uh, mainly because I felt like there was no point in including the weird attempted love triangle in there because it was very obvious who was going to end up with who and the lack of chemistry between Sloane and the other guy was just very apparent but again it's like very lighthearted, and I really enjoyed it it was such a nice breather um this book is out now it came out April 4th again I highly recommend the book if you haven't had a chance to read it if you're like into like romantic t reality tv shows this will be very fun for you it is just very pg-13 though 
there's not a lot going on in here but it's very fun and lighthearted. Definitely meant for a younger audience, I would say, though. But it is YA. This next one is also also out. The next one is also out already. It came out April 4th, and that is Never Vacation With Your Ex by Emily Wibblerly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is a this is a YA contemporary romance, again, following young Kaylee Jordan, who's like the picture picture perfection. She is gets good grades. She's set to be following in her mom's footsteps as like an Olympic volleyball player. And her best friend Dean is like this amazing photographer who is just like they're very close. They end up dating and due to Kaylee's ability to break up relationships very quickly, they break up after three months and regardless of the breakup, they end up all having to go on their yearly family trip together because both their moms are best friends from college. Um, volleyball it's a whole thing and now Kaylee is tasked or gives herself the task of giving of helping Dean move on when she is quite re not yet ready to move on herself I gave this a five out of five stars I get another very light-hearted and in, um, engaging read I really loved reading about Kaylee and I love seeing Dean's perspective on life where like he loves this aspect about himself and he would do some professional gigs on the side every now and again but it's not something that he particularly wants to make into a career, whereas Kaylee is very happy to make her passion into a career and go from there. I like seeing their dynamic. I love the friends to family trope and I love family friends to lovers trope. It's very fun for me to watch or enjoy. And I very much love that their moms are best friends and that the dads have to play mediators when the moms fight. It's just very interesting to me and I love it. I gave it again a five out of five stars. I highly recommend it if you're in the mood for, I mean, it's almost June now that this is coming out. So a very nice, light-hearted beach read. It goes by very quickly and it's just really, really entertaining, I would say. The last book that is on this list and will be getting its full, own full-length review because it's not even out yet. That is When Oceans Rise by Robin Alvarez. This is a YA, I guess like urban fantasy following a young girl named Malaya who is stuck in a in a very abusive relationship and when all the things have just destroyed her inside and out she is given an out in order to switch places with an alternate universe of herself to be able to escape this relationship now obviously there are things that happen that make it so them switching places kind of brings up every single monster and random little random little creatures that Philippine folklore have another five out of five stars Wow, surprise. I got like nothing but five stars out of this out of April. It's a very good reading month for me. But I really enjoy this book. Again, there are trigger warnings for domestic assault in this one. So just be very wary and very toxic relationships. But I really did enjoy this book. This is a five out of five stars for me. Like I said, I really liked the kind of view on domestic assault, on like abusive relationships and how that corrupts every single thing from your relationship with your family, your relationship to the things you love, your relationship to your friends, your relationship to yourself, and just how like Malaya, 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 Malaya struggled to really just kind of, that's the widest way I could have ever said that name, Malaya. Malaya could have, have just really struggled to be able to see herself in a positive light because of all the things that had happened to her, to see the world in a positive light because of all the things that happened to her, and open herself up to being able to be romantic again and to open up to people who may not understand but love her no matter what. There were some couple issues that I had that kind of like it didn't ruin the book for me but this book is definitely like on a lower five star than rather like the full five you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say but I just think there were some instances where we did kind of lose the plot line where we did kind of lose the plot line of the um malaya kind of trying to grow from this relation from this abusive relationship um mainly because there were so many things happening at the forefront with the you know the freaking filipino mythology coming around and wreaking havoc and them trying to disprove it to be able yeah all all the little bits and pieces that i feel like we kind of lost the overall message toward the end of the book i also felt like the ending was a little weird for me. I'll discuss it more in my wrap up, in my review for this book, where I will gush and gush about this book. But I just feel like there was a little bit there that just got a little bit lost. And I just kind of sat there. I had to reread it and I was like, so does that mean there's... Okay. But other than that, I really did enjoy this book and I really did love how Robin Alvarez just wrote this story. And I will be reading this book. I will be also adding this book to the list of books to purchase 
when it's out and when I go to Barnes & Noble again because it was just such an amazing book and I really just loved how she blended modern like modernity and then like the Filipino um, folklore and our myths and all of that into one and how like how those interacted it was just really good I really enjoyed it I highly recommend it if you guys haven't read it yet or I mean I'm sure not a lot of you guys have read it because it's not out until the 23rd but you know when you do if you when you do see it I suggest you go read it but that is it for my April wrap up I it was actually a really good reading month it was six all six five star books which hasn't happened for me in a hot minute so if you guys like this video and you want me to do more reviews, I am more than willing to do a video review. But until next time, hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!